One of the most commonly abused fields is the notes field. Rather than creating fields to store information categorically, amateur developers often stuff everything into a notes field. This leads to improperly formed relational design and the inability to create reports. But still, notes are very useful when used correctly. And in order to keep them neatly organized, I like to use a script for new notes. So let's start off by creating our notes fields in customer. Go to manage database. And we'll create our notes field. Simple as that. It'll be one big gigantic field. Then we'll go to layout mode. Double click on our tab control, add a notes. We'll go into that tab. And then let's get rid of the inspector here and draw ourselves a field. So we'll drag this one over here, fill up most of it. Okay, and then I'll make it the size of this entire tab control. So we can have lots of notes if we want. And let's see, got it pretty good here. I'll probably adjust it later, but we got it pretty much filling it up. I just want to make sure it's nice and even on all sides here. And it's kind of hard to do sometimes. So you might have to go between layout and browse a couple of times to get it right. Then we'll come into our inspector. And we probably want a scroll bar, so we'll do that. So we'll come in here and look for our scroll bar. There we go. And when scrolling, or always, it depends on what you like. I think in this case, since we have such a big field, I want to see the scroll bar so people are clear that there is one. So we'll do it that way today. And then also while I'm here, I'm going to make sure it grows with the tab control. OK, now we're going to need to leave a little bit of space here for our button, because we need a button to create new notes. So I'm going to drag it down just a little bit there. Let's go back into Browse. Now realize when you're looking at notes, and you've got some in here. Oops, there we go. Ah, well, <laughs> looks like we uh, have that script trigger running and uh, that's preventing carriage returns. Obviously, that's a problem here. So let's go into layout mode. Go to our layout setup, script triggers, and take that feature off. There we go. We'll try that again. Hit a couple returns. There we go. Now, when you're going into a field like this, you can click anywhere you want. Your cursor generally goes right about where you click. If you happen to, at this point, tab into the field, and probably we're going to have to click into it, Shift Tab, and then Tab, you see that the cursor goes at the very end. And what we really want is we want notes at the beginning. And what we don't want to have happen is this, because people could be trained to put the notes at the beginning, but we don't want to have this, 1 slash 1 slash 2016, colon, blah, blah, blah. And then somebody comes down here, 1 slash 3 slash 2016. And then the next guy comes over here and does a 2 slash 1 slash 2016. You can see they can get out of order. They might enter them differently. Maybe one gentleman puts the date in parentheses at the end. I mean, who knows what's going to happen. It looks like I, I actually copied and pasted something else, but you get the point. It could go right in here. I mean, it could just get to be a big mess. And what we want to try to do is keep it as clean as we can. It still won't be perfect, but uh, this script will really help you out. So we'll come in here, add ourselves a new script. We'll call it Notes Timestamp. And we're going to start off with Go To Object. Now, we haven't named that object, so we're going to need to do that. But this will make sure that we have this field selected. We're going to call it Notes Field. So let's get out of here for just a second. Go into Layout Mode and call this Notes Field before I forget to do that. That looks good. Go to Browse Mode. Go to our script workspace again. 
And now that will select the notes field because what we're doing here is we're making an adaptive script. We want this to work on any notes field in any table. So we can call it notes field wherever we might be using it. We could use a script parameter here, but likely the notes fields are going to be on uh, separate tables. So, or, uh, so given that, we can name them the same thing. But you could use a script parameter here if you actually had multiple, uh, you know, multiple uh, notes fields on one layout. And that's a possibility, but in this case, I don't want to make things more complex than they have to be. It's much easier just to call it the same thing, but in this case, the, the notes field will be in invoices, but it'll have exactly the same name notes field. So that's just my viewpoint on it. Could come back to bite me if I decide to put a, another notes field here, but who knows. Note selection. Okay, so we're going to set the selection for the upper left-hand corner. Okay, we've already got it selected, so we don't need to specify a target field. We're going to come over here and set it at 0 and 0. That's going to put it in the upper left-hand corner. So what we do next, because remember when we go to the field, when we go to we do this go to objects, it's going to be at the end of all the contents. We want it at the very beginning. That's all that does right there. Next thing we're going to do is insert calculated result. We can't really use a, a set field here. We need to put it, the information right where the cursor is. And so we're going to take this select entire contents off. We don't need to specify the target field. And all we need to do is put in what we want to precede everything here. So we're going to put in quote dash space quote and then ampersand or concatenate current timestamp and then on top of that we're going to put a colon a space as well as two returns that will separate these notes so you'll see that the what will happen here is that that when they hit that new note, they're going to get everything pushed down a little bit, two returns to be exact, and then we're going to put this information in there uh, about the timestamp so they know who did it. You could even add in the count name if you wanted to, if there are multiple users in your system, so you, you know who made the note. I'm not going to do that here, but that would be easy to do with get, uh, you know, account name, current account name. So we could do that now. The only problem here is when you do this insert, your cursor is going to be way back here at the beginning. We want it over here. Actually, it's going to be way down here after the returns. We want it to actually be right here. And so we need to go ahead and move our selection a little bit uh, further to the left. So what we're going to do is do another set selection. We're going to come in here and say, oops, didn't mean to do that. We're going to come in here for our start position and put get active selection start. That will tell us where we're at. We're going to subtract 2 and we'll be exactly where we want to be. We're going to leave the end position at 0. So the start position should be wherever we are minus 2. Very simple to do. So we'll save this. Go into layout mode. Go to our notes. Get ourselves a nice button here. I'll duplicate this one. Before I forget, I'll make sure that it stays over to the right. Move right in here so it's nice and even with everything. Perfect. Up a little bit. That's good. Call it timestamp. And then we're going to go ahead and... Oh, we got a pop over here. Well, that's, that's not going to work very well, is it? So I'll delete that and we'll start over again. I believe this is the real button here. We'll find out in a second before I change all these things. There we go. Yep, that's a real button, so we'll tell it to run the notes timestamp. Call it timestamp. And that should be it. Let's go into browse mode and see what we can do here. So you see the existing information. If I hit timestamp, you can see it's perfectly positioned for me to do a note. And then if I go and do something else and come back, hit timestamp again, moves everything down. So it's neat, keeps it nice and neat, and you know, so it looks really good. So when you know somebody comes to read these notes, they actually can find what they're looking for. It's all consistent. It's you know going to be spaced here. You have this little dash here. It tells you where each new note is. It just makes a lot of sense as far as organizing your database.